Nigerians. Yeah. Morning. Thank you for joining us. So we'll, we will begin with the Vanguard this morning. And the Vanguard leads with labor, private sector operators, bicker over minimum wage. Now this says, organized labor's 497 demand unrealistic. That is being said by the presidency. Um, another one says, adds um, affordability key to arriving at any figure. NLC 6 minimum wage for journalists in Nigeria cautions against harassment by security agents. So this minimum wage has obviously been a conversation that has been, you know, going back and forth for several months right now. Um, initially started at about 1 million naira, then the labor decided to bring it out to, down to 615,000 naira. Right now they are about 400,000 naira. The presidency or the, the government on the other hand said they can only do about 25 to 35 percent on top of the current minimum wage which has expired anyway and that was at 30,000 naira so when they came to a figure it was um, about you know 48,000 naira and then they increased it again to about 52,000 naira well now, <laughs> Labour is still asking for 497,000 naira. Presidency is saying it's unrealistic. I want to get your comment on this. Do you think it's unrealistic looking at, you know, how expensive things are right now? Hyperinflation, the prices of goods and services skyrocketing. People are not being able to have that standard of living they used to have before. Do you think 497,000 naira in this time, in this current economy, is just unrealistic? Well, there is so, so much uh, goes into all that. Um, in a, what you call a collective uh, bargaining, which is uh, the process that uh, brings uh, in uh, the employers of labor and um, labor unions to agree or work as a welfare and general condition of service. That's what we call industrial, that's what we call a collective bargaining, and that is what is going on now. Um, Yes, uh, the federal government is saying what it should say, that is uh, unrealistic. And uh, for me also, uh, the figure is uh, unrealistic. And I'll tell you why. You see, um, we are not just talking about uh, paying uh, the salaries here. There are other um, issues that have to be dealt with by government. And um, that is why I keep saying that enough uh, research and thinking is not going uh, into all this. We had expected to see from Labour a, a comprehensive analysis of um, a number of uh, issues. For example, what is uh, the wage body of uh, the federal government, the uh, state, and the uh, local government? What's the wage body? What does it stand at at this moment? So if you take that of the federal government out, what if you're asking for half a million naira, for example, what would that multi what would that come to when multiplied? You know, because I was trying to do the math last night, and I discovered that uh, if the federal government uh, would agree with labor at uh, the four hundred and ninety-seven thousand um, that they are proposing at the moment, the monthly uh, wage burden will uh, cross uh, 30, 30 trillion. So, what is uh, the budget of the federal government? It means that even if the federal government will have to devote its entire annual budget to the payment of uh, salaries alone, it still will not be able to meet the um, amount being demanded by labor. This is not to say that uh, the uh, demand of labor is unreasonable. Uh, going by the... Um, astronomical and phenomen phenomenal uh, increase you have across everything in the country. Uh, I don't know of any uh, item or service in Nigeria that has not uh, multiplied uh, by 300%. If that is true, you will discover that indeed even a half a millionaire may not be enough for the average worker. But that is where we have gotten ourselves. Partly again because the labor didn't do what they should do. Labor committed one gross error of judgment by allowing the federal government to remove the fuel subsidy without uh, uh, um, putting a, a few things on ground. They, they should have insisted that the, the fuel subsidy would stay 
for at least six months to enable government deal with uh, some uh, logistical um, uh, provisions that will be on ground, like uh, refineries in Nigeria working and all that. I listened to the vice president the other day, uh, Shetima, saying that uh, the federal government is uh, committing $25 billion, $25 billion to a, a fuel importation. You can do the math and see what is going on. So you can see that if the money that ought to have been saved within the country is being uh, diverted to fuel uh, importation. Why? Because the four refineries we have in the country are not working. The question is why? Why, why are the refineries not working? So you can see that labor, labor it means the opportunity of uh, really getting the federal government to do the need for the full removal of a fuel subsidy. That is what has brought us to where we are. So, uh, I, uh, federal government is also not being realistic by saying that they would pay uh, only a 54,000 uh, naira, which is a, a 25 to 35 percent uh, increase on um, on uh, um, the initial uh, minimum wage, which of course you rightly observe has, has expired. Federal government cannot pay anything less than 300 percent. 300 percent. That will bring us to a neighborhood of 100,000 to 150,000. That is what will be fair. In what you may call fair wage. It will not even be a living wage. Just something fair enough, a, a multiplier effect that the economy has experienced since uh, the sudden and unprepared removal of a fuel subsidy. So, yeah. While we are at it and still talking about these uh, salaries and all that, ASU is threatening strike over salary review and varsity funding. I don't know how we uh, will be surviving from, you know, it seems to be coming so, from all corners. Can see, so so what, what I was saying yes. that we made, we made a fundamental error. You know, government, uh, President Tinubu um, was responding to the need if you remember during the presidential campaign, mm -hmm. the three leading presidential uh, candidates, Atiku, Tinubu, and Dumbi, all said that they were going to remove the fuel subsidy. So, the issue of removal of fuel subsidy is not a contention. What, what, where the problem uh, occurred is uh, the way it was removed. The suddenness. There is no, there was no need whatsoever for the president to just announce that the uh, fuel subsidy is removed without anything on ground. And that is exactly what has brought the country to where we are. And to even uh, make the matter more tragic, the federal government is back to fuel a subsidy. Federal government is subsidizing fuel as we speak. Even so, after causing major havoc in the economy, causing misalignment, complete misalignment, you have gone into what you call a stagflation Stagflation is where you have complete depression in the economy. The economy is stagnating, and yet the cost of goods are going up. Why wouldn't they go up? Since, since you are not producing much, you are not exporting much, go to the Bureau, um, uh, National Bureau of Statistics. You will see that uh, the nation's uh, um, export is still about 55% crude oil dependent. How much of the oil is mortgaged? By the Buhari administration. What that means is that you can't even get the whole total receipts of uh, the oil you sell today because Buhari administration used the future oil production for mortgage to take loans. So we have a total problem, complete problem. Also, it's coming into the fray also and all that. You remember um, that throughout the regime or administration of uh, Muhammad Buhari, it was about ASU. It, they, they went on strike at least twice. One lasted for eight months. Another lasted for, for um, nine months. If you call, if you combine the two, we're talking about uh, a school uh, uh, closure for a, close to two years. It happened under, under Muhammad Buhari. And it's beginning again. And uh, no matter how we look at it, we all need to go back to the drawing board. And begin to sort things from the foundation. Uh, Timbo walked into, into a trap, the trap of the Bretton Woods. Bretton Woods institutions are primarily IMF and the World Bank. 
They are the ones that keep talk that have, they have been pressing Nigerian government's right for the military days to remove fuel subsidy, remove debris subsidy. Whereas in their own countries, US, Canada, Britain, Germany, all of them, they are all subsidizing energy. So why are they is still that in, that in Nigeria that is not exporting much will have to remove totally fuel subsidy? Now, Tinubu has tried it and he failed colossally and he has gone through the back door to bring back a fuel subsidy. But the damage done to the economy cannot be recovered in the next uh, 10 to 20 years. Let me tell you why. They also floated the Naira at the same time. When you float the Naira, the simple logic is this. You want Naira to find its level. Finding its level means to find its le level in relation to the pound, to the euro, to the yuan, to the, to, to the, to the, to the dollar, and all that. And for you to be able to do that, you must be heavily exporting. We are not exporting because we are not producing. We, can, we are even import dependent to the, up, to, up to the sugar in your tea. It's important. You know? So if you look at it from that perspective, you see that you are not, you're not uh, exporting to make uh, the required uh, foreign exchange to back up your Naira that you are now floating. You are also importing virtually everything. Food we eat in Nigeria. Over 80% of what we eat in Nigeria is not imported because our, our farmers can't farm because of insecurity and all that. So you can see the two policies that have brought us to where we are at the moment, neither flotation and fuel subsidy removal. Government it bringing the two together at the same time crashed the economy. That is the problem. So you can see the price of everything Bread went from the 500 Naira to 1,500. Across the board, everything is affected a minimum of 300%. So, Lebanon needs more money, we agree, but they cannot get more than 150,000. This is my humble submission. Because if you go, if you multiply it, you discover that what they are looking for now, the federal government cannot pay. Because it means that after paying salary, they can't, there will be no oil in this, anything else done, even on capital projects. Because if you look at uh, the current uh, budget, it's about 27 trillion. But what level is Dr. Law. for? Yes. Okay, so we've just been trying to get your attention. So I, you see, we're speaking about subsidy, and there's another one here that talks about, yeah. um, you know, Tony Lumelu, who is the um, chairman for Transcorp. PLC, and then he's told the federal government to pay Genco's the 1.3 million naira debt to avoid sector's collapse. And so he has said that for Transcorp alone, the federal government is owing them about 250 billion naira. That's for Transcorp alone. So talk more about others. And then he's urging the federal government to privatize fully the um, electricity sector. So what do you think about the privatization of this? Because you're just talking you about know, subsidy, and then there's still some subsidy that is having to... Because he said they cannot afford to keep subsidizing the, the energy sector in Nigeria. We, we, we have a fundamental problem. What we need is not even privatization. is to move power completely to concurrent list, which I think um, the process has uh, begun. Uh, it started uh, from uh, the uh, Muhammad Buhari administration, and the uh, Tinubu eventually um, signed a law that would enable the states, even local governments and individuals, to generate electricity and distribute. That is what we need. But we need an implementation committee so that the, the willing states can come together, even in clusters, to begin to activate that law. Once that is done, states will be able to in the next one to two years exit the, the the national grid once they do that the burden at the center will reduce but without law that has uh, come into uh, existence in the last one year nothing has been done by the state governments in nigeria i'm not aware of any state government that has taken any proactive uh, measure to go into power and of course you and i know that power is extremely capital intensive 
That is why the federal government will have to come in and um, work with the states on decentralizing power generation and distribution in Nigeria. When you say total privatization, whatever that means, you are talking about moving power completely to uh, individual uh, individual hands. We we may not we may not get there in the next ten years. So when we lose a proposal, he's a top notch um, uh, industrialist and uh, an entrepreneur. He he understands the benefits of privatization in a growing economy such as Nigeria's. But we can't get there in the next 10 years, even if you privatize today. And of course, don't forget that Nigeria has actually privatized right from the days of Vassan Joe and, the, and um, Good Luck Jonathan. But the privatization was partial in the sense that generation federal government is still holding up to 40%. In um, transmission, federal government is holding 100%. In distribution, they have released it 100%. What that means is that in the, in the tripartite um, arrangement you have in uh, the power sector, generation, uh, transmission, and uh, distribution, federal government is holding 140% and the 160% uh, in the private hands. Maybe it will be the same remove your hand from transmission. And I agree with him, because if you generate and you can't transmit, you have not done anything. And part of the problem we have today is that nothing has happened along uh, the transmission, electricity transmission uh, component. Why? Because most of the component, most of the, of the, the components of that the transmission line are obsolete. Nobody's renewing them. So you have Jenkos that are generating and uh, the discos are not are not uh, absorbing all the all the energy that all the energy that is produced. So you can see the contradiction. Okay. The government says it has it has uh, it has uh, it okay. has uh, um, privatized. Okay. But you are standing between you are standing between the, the generation and distribution because your transmission is the is the checkpoint is the. Is the is the uh, gateway between generation and distribution? Yeah. And federal government is I, holding I, it I, I, I see the point you're making, uh, Dr. Mefo. Uh, but uh, let's just leave energy because it's, yeah. it's a problem. Even mm -hmm. now, the the minister has said that they are putting it on hold because there are things, there are T's and I's that need to be crossed and dotted before uh, that implementation of the the uh okay allowing states to trans to get electricity and all that will be done so let's leave that for him but i just want to uh, get your opinion on the fact that the accountant uh, the agf is advocating scrapping of state electoral bodies uh so they seem to be too independent for the liking of INEC and the liking of the agf and i, I want your opinion on that do you think uh, the sec will do better they, 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 if they are they, under INEC? Or if yeah, I the whole thing, general, they do better. The Attorney General of Federation is absolutely right there. Because the contemplation of the law is not what we see in practice. Even uh, the state term um, electoral commissions are doing a good job. How come the party in power wins all the elections in states 100%? What kind of uh, democracy is that? No matter the party in power, once you conduct the elections at uh, the local government the level, chairman, councillors, all of them are taken up by the party in power. Why? Because of obvious interference by the state governors. So if you take uh, that responsibility away from uh, the state government and vest it in, uh, the, in the INEC, it, we may begin to see better results. So I totally agree with the attorney. But are, are, you, are you confident I, that I INEC agree. on the national scene does a better job than SEC does at the local scene? They do. They, they do because we have seen uh, people, uh, uh, even, even if INEC is not doing any better job, all the governors should be, be should be NPC. But you have the uh, governors that are Labour, you have Abga, you have the uh, PDP, which means the parties, even though not yet to who, Parties can win elections where they are popular. Mm. But it does not happen in states. That's the question here. You can run your check. There is no state government that has conducted the election in Nigeria 
where the party in power has not won 100 percent it doesn't happen in any democracy it doesn't so they are they have not it means that the state governments have not allowed the state electoral commissions to work since they can't allow the commissions to work the responsibility should be vested in a more a neutral uh, body which is the uh, the uh, the national independent uh, INEC itself. I believe I believe the, the, the job should be taken over by INEC. So I agree with uh, the, the uh, Attorney General there. I also agree with him. And uh, there is another thing he's testing in uh, the Supreme Court: the autonomy of local governments. Yeah, that was the next one I wanted to mm. take because here on yes, the Daily Independent, testing. hello, sir. So here on the Daily um, Independent, it yes. says someone will look faults federal government suits against 36 governors over local government autonomy. So um, obviously, uh, the local governments are still being run by the in state the governors. They still meddle in the affairs. And I'm just wondering, how will each local government be able to grow and develop on their own if those, the state governors are still the ones allocating everything, saying what needs to be done? If we're saying we have three tiers of government, me, why can't we have the federal yes, on their own, it. the state on their own, and the local government on their own, each all independent. So which means the federal government is singing a different me, tune from the state government. How will yeah, it work? Yeah, and now, you know, someone Lu has come out to, to even fault that suit from the federal government. And it's not the only one. I'm wow. Sure. He is uh, faulting it for obvious reasons. He wants to continue to sit on the funds meant for the local governments in electoral state. That's just a simple truth. Uh, but doctor, it's not just Somolo. Even though his his name is being mentioned, it's not just but him. Most, I'm sure, yeah. most um, not most all of them. Because yeah. even in the in the minimum wage negotiation, some governors are part of the the team, but they never attend the meeting because mm -hmm. they are not even interested. So it's not just Somolo; it's the governors. The, the, the governors don't have to uh, physically attend the meetings. They have appropriate commissioners that should represent them on those boards. That's the truth. You go there with a brief, you know, so go there with a brief, you know where the governor stands, and you watch things there, make arguments, and then they go back to him to receive. That is how uh, collective bargaining really goes. Uh, the NLC president doesn't have to lead the, the labor team, even if he's doing so at the moment. Go back to the issue of local government autonomy. See, the contemplation of the Constitution and the, the express provisions of the extant laws, some of them are even constitutional, is that local governments in Nigeria constitute, they constitute a tier of government. Mm. That means you, we are running a three-tier uh, government constitutionally provided for in Nigeria, federal, state, and local government. Now, the state governments, the state governors are exploiting one constitutional provision uh, which uh, uh, created what you call uh, the Jack Jack account. Jack is uh, a local government, state uh, government uh, joint account. It is an account where all the accruals of uh, the of the local governments for the state are domiciled, and the chairman of that account is a uh, is the governor. So what the governors do in Nigeria is uh, they collect the monthly allocations of uh, the local governments, and then. All the the, 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 the the chairman and give the money to pay salary and um, another one or two million naira to um, see to things like uh, security payment of uh, traditional rulers and that is where it ends. That is why most uh, local government chairmen don't even stay in uh, their local government because there is nothing to do, no job as far as All as right. far as the practice is concerned. Mm. So right. the, the attorney general is right by saying, look, if the money is originally meant for the local government, can the state governors disburse the money as they please? Let this money go straight to the local government chairman and the council, and they will, they, they will apply the money according to uh, 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 the, the problems they have. The, the governors will take over 70 to 80 percent of the money for the local government mm -hmm. and use the money as they please mm. they will use it for, to develop um, the state capital so you go to the local governments in rural uh, areas you don't find anything 
Mm. Well, it's, it's, it's just unfortunate. It's just unfortunate that this is happening, and we do yeah. hope that we'll find a solution to it. it exactly. will, we saw in Ogun State, for instance, where one of the local government chairmen said that uh, monies do not reach them, mm -hmm. and other local government chairmen teamed up and they removed him. Uh, everybody was because uh, they just, wanted to be faithful. To yes. The so I don't know because yeah. these governors installed them in mm. the first place. Most anyway, times, there yeah. is also. You know, there is one more thing I need to quickly point out. Yes, as we're wrapping before up you now. Start, Before you shut down. Mm. One thing I need to point out is that, you know, between 15 and 20 um, uh, states uh, in Nigeria, as are today, uh, their local governments are run by caretaker committees, mm. transition committees. Mm. That means unelected personnel appointed by the governors. Mm. You see where the problem is? So, because, because uh, the governors and the appointors, what they tell their appointees is what they do. You can't raise, you, you just can't question the governor. He appointed you, and if you raise an eyebrow, he will remove you the next moment. So, mm -hmm. the attorney general should be supported to get a pronouncement uh, of uh, the Supreme Court on this. Should, they, should, should the governors be allowed to disburse local government funds as they like? But I also think that there is an amendment. There has to be an amendment of the Constitution to abrogate the joint um, account. Mm -hmm. That's a jack account, which I told you is a, a, an account maintained between the state government and the, the local government. And that jack account is, you know, the Constitution says that the governor is the chairman of the, of the committee. So you, you need to first remove that, um, that leeway which the governors are using. Constitutionally, propose the attorney general must take the matter a touch a, 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 a notch further by proposing a quick amendment to the constitution to remove that uh, provision completely from the constitution. There should be nothing, no, no there should be nothing joint between the state and the uh, and, uh, and the local government. Yeah. Especially okay. when it comes to money. All right. All right. The, the local governments should be able to apply their money according to the mandate their campaign promises because they, they contested okay election. sir all yes right. all right, and, all right and again, sir thank you the, so much the, the supreme court the supreme court must make a provision must make a policy statement that local government elections must be held across nigeria yes okay. yes we yeah. totally agree with you because we need that independence for the local government and then it even helps them for functionality as mm -hmm. well because they cannot just be redundant doing nothing when is the state governor that's still running the affairs mm -hmm. all right dr law want to say thank you for coming it was lovely reviewing the papers with you thank you so much